Thank you, Mira. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Fiona Nzingo, and I recently took over the role of membership and engagement manager from Michael this past spring. Uh, since the last General Assembly in Jakarta, GFMD has welcomed a total of 61 new general members. Uh, today, GFMD has a total of 103 general members based in 46 countries. As you can see, our membership representation spans out across all regions. Um, throughout, through the new constitution, we have a huge opportunity, thank you Ivana, we have a huge opportunity to revamp our membership engagement and ensure that it, along with the new member recruitment process, is flexible enough to accommodate the multiple communities we engage with. Uh, this will be accompanied by a new fee structure, which will be put in place by the new steering committee, uh, with the intention of making it easier for smaller organizations to become members of GFMD, and for those who stop paying fees to get the chance to re-engage. Um, with that in mind, I would also like to take this opportunity while we're here in Tirana to engage with anyone who would like to help us recruit new members, reach out to old ones and roll out affiliate membership groups, which Tom had earlier outlined um, in the changes to the constitution. And for those of you that are online, Jordan will be sharing my email address in the chat in case you would want to get in touch with me. Um, so Ol Olga will be talking about communications and knowledge sharing shortly. So I will briefly share with you the events and meetings we've had um, the chance to engage with our members. So from 2016 to 2021, we organized roughly 80 meetings and events. On the screen, you can see a breakdown of these events. Uh, these events play the same important role of facilitating learning and knowledge sharing amongst members through two-way communication and open discussion. And uh, also as part of our ongoing efforts to strengthen information ecosystem, promote the work of our members among digital platforms and ensure the rich information our network produces can reach a wider audience. Our dialogue with Twitter resulted in the verification of the account of some of our members and their partners. Um, and if you do not have any, if you do not have the blue tick on your Twitter account just yet, uh, please feel free to, em to email me so that we can arrange that. And I'm really looking forward to engaging with you all and hearing from you about what being a member of, G of the GFMD network means to you, along with the direction you would like to see our membership move towards. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Anne-Marie Hammer. I'm one of GFMD's program and project managers. And I have, I think less than three minutes because my computer is dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm here to tell you briefly about the Media Dev Fundraising Guide, which was launched in June. Um, following on from GFMD's fundraising webinars in 2018 and 2019, all of which are a part of our capacity building program. So what's in the guide? Well, the guide is a series of 11 incre incremental learning modules that cover preparation and planning, identifying opportunities, writing a proposal, budgeting, and other important aspects of the fundraising process. It also contains a lexicon of uh, funding vocabulary, for those of us who are new to fundraising, uh, for those of you who are new to fundraising, or if you like me, forget the difference between the concepts of monitoring and evaluation in the middle of the night when you're trying to finish that stupid application. So uh, it's very, very useful. I can attest to that. Um, we also have a growing list of profiles uh, of media development funders, uh, emergency grants and granting mechanisms, uh, information for journalists and media about small grants, funding for mental health services, <laughs> financial assistance, legal aid, and representation. There's also a collection of fundraising guides and tips and advice from GFMD members and partners who already have um, put a lot of work into creating um, guides that are specific to their members and their partners. And we also have a list of relevant articles that are related to this area. The Latin American uh, collab collaborative journalism platform Chicas Poderosas um, was among uh, the three to six organizations who extensively reviewed the guide. And you can see up here on the screen, a quote from Raquel Bennett, who's their membership manager. And um, we're really pleased that they were pleased with what we had produced. So the next steps for us now um, will be to continue to promote the fundraising guide through Bottom Line, which is our new fundraising focused newsletter. Please subscribe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll be working with our members to add new case studies so that we can gather and share the network's own experiences. And that way we can improve the concerted capacity to secure funding for the sector. 
Um, and then we're also now uh, seeking funding to produce the guide in more languages, specifically Arabic, French, and Spanish here in the start, um, so that we can adapt it to the fundraising environments also in the different regions that we are representing. So now from one, um, from our global project to a country level one, where we bring together international partners with local partners. So my fellow programs and project manager, Ivana, is going to tell you about our work in Lebanon over the last year. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. So my name is Ivana bialic rutunic and I am the other pro programs and project manager, I'm the other Anne-Marie. <laughs> and um, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about our um, media systems coordination efforts. So over the past years, we've done uh, media system coordination in um, several countries, Syria, Yemen, Sudan, and most recently in uh, 2020 and 2021 in Lebanon. Uh, the aim of these initiatives is to facilitate information sharing and coordination of the international and local media development and journalism support organizations. In Lebanon, in partnership with International Media Support and SCAE Center, we jointly organized two successful coordination and information sharing meetings that discussed the needs and priorities of journalism and media communities on the ground and areas for potential partnership, collaboration and innovation. We had around 40 participants at each of the meetings. We also prepared a mapping of media support programs in Lebanon and active projects in the country and the literature review of recent research and policy papers. Uh, we also conducted snapshot research on media sustainability and viability from the perspective of the international and local media system professionals and representatives of Lebanese media organizations. Lebanese uh, journalism organizations and media outlets also joined us during our second coordination meeting, where we spoke about their business models and mechanisms to achieve sustainability. Key for success of this initiative is that many of our members and partners took an active part in the meetings, information sharing and the snapshot research, including Maharat Foundation, Media Association for Peace, MAP, Arab Reporters for Investigative Journalism, or short ARIGE, OCCRP, Canal France International, CFI, Deutsche Welle Academy, Free Press Unlimited, CIMA, SMAX, Thompson Foundation, Internews, ICFJ, and some of our partners, including NED, UNESCO, and Open Society Foundations. To bring these resources together, we developed a dedicated resource center, coordination.gfmd.info. You can see it on the screen, part of this uh, resource center. And uh, there are some lessons we've learned when we implemented this program. This is a model that we would like to extend to other countries if and when needed. And the lessons uh, that we learned uh, from these types of facilitation and coordination activities are, lesson number one, it is important that these media assistant coordina coordinations are initiated and driven by local organizations. In the case of Lebanon coordination, our members, Samir Kassir Fund, uh, Foundation Care Center, and we have Naila present here, and Ayman online, thank you for joining us, led the creation of Lebanon Media Recovery Fund, responding to the direct needs of the media after the Beirut, uh, Beirut uh, port blast. Second lesson we've learned is it is most effective when donors and international media support organizations provide assistance based on local input and expertise, driven by a philosophy of listening to the partners to identify the needs and act accordingly. This was the approach of our member IMS, and they had this approach when supporting the joint coordination mechanism in Lebanon. The third uh, lesson learned is the role of the global, media, uh, global forum for media development. And our role in these programs is, is to facilitate convening and coordination and provide expertise and insights from, from our membership network as a trusted and neutral partner. If you would like to discuss any of this, please join us for the strategy meeting tomorrow or send me an email. To move over from this um, co coordination project, uh, the experience on a country level in Lebanon is similar in many ways to our new initiative, the International Media Policy and Advisory Center, GFMD Impact. GFMD Impact was created after a consultation with our members and donors that began in 2019, that found that the sector needed a safe space 
for donors, media development practitioners, and the research evaluation and academic community to honestly discuss what is working and what isn't working across the wide range of media environments. To facilitate this and ensure that, that GFMD impact has a degree of editorial independence from GFMD's work on uh, we, uh, on behalf and representing the interests of our members, a governance structure for GFMD consisting of donors, media pr development practitioners, and the research and academic community will be established by our new steering committee uh, in, in the days and months to come. This, uh, and this will be done through the new advisory board and policy and learning subcommittee, which will be established, which are established by the new constitution. As well as formalizing how GFMD convenes the donor, practitioner, and academic community around the table, GFMD Impact also ensures that we have institutional capacity to respond to the requests for advice and guidance from our members and donors. And I will give floor to Tom, my colleague, to talk a little bit more how we are doing this and what we have achieved so far. Tom. Thanks, Ivana. So this year, we're going to organize four uh, donor, practitioner, and academia meetings. Uh, the first two focused on, uh, the first of the two focused on theories of change and impact measurement, which was co-convened by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation and uh, SEMA. Uh, the second was on media support responses to disinformation, which was co-convened by USAID and our colleague, Susan, who is here from the uh, International Association for Media Communication Research, their media sector working group. And Jordan's going to share the reports from both of those meetings um, in, in the chat now, and they're available on the GFD Impact um, website. So for each meeting, we started by doing a literature review of the relevant material and invited participants to give us case studies to really summarize uh, what they've learned from implementing their projects. And this allowed the, the meeting itself to actually focus on discussion. Rather than having long presentations, as we are doing right now, we could delve straight into actual debate and discussion, having prepared the uh, literature and uh, case studies that could be watched on YouTube in advance, so the two hours on Zoom were not as painful as they might have been. Um, now, so, and then after the event, we would put a, a report together, which would bring together the discussions in the meeting with literature review, and we're going to continue um, that process for the, uh, for the next two meetings. And thank you all for your contributions so far. And please keep giving us feedback about how we can improve that learning process. The next meeting is going to be in November. It's going to follow up on the disinformation meeting, this time looking at regulation and legislation rather than media support responses. And in December, we're going to look at um, media actors and how they can best support viability and sustainability. So if you have case studies, evaluation reports that you want to contribute uh, to inform either of those processes and, and meetings, please do, um, please do uh, talk to me about it. So uh, we've also established a help desk, which is a network of experts based in all the regions that GFMD um, works in to, uh, to respond to requests from donors or from our members about how best to approach um, certain subjects. So one example of that this year was in collaboration with SEMA, responded to a request from uh, the UK's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, and we created a briefing paper on ways that the Media Freedom Coalition could work with members to improve media assistance and ODA, overseas development aid, data and information sharing. And we're coordinating all of this using a mailing list, as well as a dedicated resource centre. So please sign up to the email list if you haven't already. And uh, we're looking forward to working with you all and growing this, this new part and we think really important part of GFMD's work. And now I'd like to pass on to Biba, who's going to talk about partnerships, GFMD. Thank you, Tom. Hope you can hear me. And hi, everyone. Uh, I joined GFMD as International Partnerships Manager in May of this year, and I'm working closely with Mira and the team on strengthening our ongoing relationship with partners and hopefully building some new ones, some new connections. Uh, and the way we see collaborations is a, as a powerful way to deliver more effective programs, to accelerate our own impact, to expand our reach and to advance our own mission. 
And speaking of collaborations, this year, as you know, we conducted an engagement survey and network analysis uh, in partnership with Adam Safer of the University of Minnesota. And I think some of you know him from Jakarta. And the survey had quite a number of interesting findings. The analysis focused on how well connected members are and tried to identify the patterns of connections among members. So among you. <laughs> a portion of that survey focused on members' engagement with our resources, and the other part of the survey revealed and assessed the patterns of relationships among the members. And you can see the visual on the screen that was there before, and that illustrated, yeah, it, you're going too far. It's, we're still on the first slide. Yeah, so it shows the many connections there are in this network. And uh, here's what we gathered from the findings. And Mira already mentioned some of these things in the beginning. The top three reasons that members participate in this network is for information and knowledge exchange, policy and decision-making support, and building networks. And overall, the connectedness of the network has improved since the previous analysis that was done in 2015 to 16. Members are connecting with each other and in such a way that the connections are distributed somewhat evenly rather than just concentrating around a select few organizations. But looking at the north-south divide, we still see that the connections are dominated by the north. And I can't go into all the details. It's a long survey. You have it on our website. And Jordan's also uh, sharing the link to the analysis. And now coming back to the partnerships and building networks. When I joined, so I looked at which organizations we're currently working with and what kind of relationships we have with them. And it's really fascinating to see that GFMD is engaged in different ways with different partners in different contexts with the aim of achieving different goals. And this slide that is up, up now shows just the many different types of partners that we're working with. And I don't have enough time to go through all of them, but you can see there are many from the general members, uh, over a hundred organizations, and many of them are sitting with us right now or are in the screen, to GFMD donors and funders, to civil society organizations such as safety and freedom of expression organizations, foundations focusing on gender and diversity, to research and academic institutions, to intergovernmental organizations, to coalitions of NGOs such as the Global Network Initiative, Christchurch Call Advisory Network, to tech platforms, and also other members, partners, uh, and beneficiaries, or connections we make through you know, our, our events, our programs. So there's, there's a lot. And um, the next slide shows just a few examples of the way we engage with partners. How do we do it? Uh, for example, by building alliances via joint programming or affinity groups in that we bring together professionals in the sector for networking, peer support and professional growth and impact, which Tom was talking about before, is just one of the examples. Or we're acting as a secretariat for different initiatives, such as the Dynamic Coalition on the Sustainability of Journalism and News Media, which was formally launched at the Internet Governance Forum in Berlin in 2019, or a journalism funders forum. So GFMD, as some of you might know, has just has entered into a strategic partnership with the journalism funders forum earlier this year. Um, it was initially uh, hosted by the European Journalism Center. And I think Lars, the new director of EJC, is with us online. Uh, it is for now, it's very short term agreement, but we believe that GFMD is a good fit for, for JFF as it complements our existing work fostering dialogue between donors and the journalism community. And this is my last slide, I promise. Uh, and it, it is talking or it is looking at the whys. So why are we building partnerships? Why are we collaborating? For us, working with our partners is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. So we're collaborating with other organizations in the sector, in the field and beyond to pull common interests, to pull resources and activities. Again, there's a long list of, of the reasons why we're collaborating. And again, I can't go through all of them, but one of them is scaling up our efforts and increasing organizational effectiveness. 
as you saw from my colleagues, uh, we're doing a lot of things with a lot of organizations running a lot of projects, but we are a small team. So pooling resources, joining forces enables us to do our work better and more efficient, to strengthen and expand our programming, to extend our own mission, achieve greater economies of program scale in that we share knowledge from one program with the rest of the community, entering new geographies, providing new services, reaching new beneficiaries. So I could go on and on, um, but I won't because we don't have the time. So thank you so much for listening. It was just a brief overview of what we do in terms of partnerships, but please reach out if you want to talk more. If you have ideas, there's also our strategy session tomorrow, which please join. And, and there we can look further, you know, what can we do better? How can we collaborate better? And I'm just really excited to hear your thoughts on that. So yeah, I'll finish with that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you all. Um, excellent. And uh, thank you, Biba. Uh, Jordan is uh, doing technical support and uh, communicating with our uh, uh, colleagues online. So uh, I'll do uh, policy and advocacy. And in the interest of time, I know we are all waiting to uh, hear about the new steering committee. So I'll just say uh, two sentences. Uh, we've uh, created spaces in major um, international, multilateral, bilateral, uh, bilateral, and other uh, conversations for our community to engage, both in the international development and also in the digital um, internet governance uh, space. Uh, we will be talking tomorrow in detail about this, so I won't take any more of, uh, of your time, but there is a lot that we can do. The struggle will be to uh, choose our priorities carefully and work together to, uh, over the couple, next couple of years, create at least uh, one or two uh, strong united global campaigns. So um, that much from me. Um, now I will invite Olga to uh, just give us a quick review of our um, uh, communication activities, and then we will go to finances, and uh, I promise that's it from us. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Olga. I'm in charge of communications. So over the five-year period, JFMD continued to grow its existing communications channel while also launching new ones. So website engagement rose dramatically over the period, with average annual users rising six times and page views four times. We launched two updates to the JFMD website to offer the members a broad range of services and serve as a knowledge hub for media development community. The first update was in 2018, and the latest one was right ahead of this General Assembly. Thank you, Jordan. So the new website is divided into three main parts. The Town Square, which serves as a hub for sharing career opportunities, highlighting member news and updates, and getting to know the GFMD communi community. Knowledge Circle is a curation of information and resources produced by our learning and policy meetings and from GFMD impact meetings. And the last section is Bottom Line, uh, which is a center for funding opportunities and a collection of carefully selected resources, which helps individuals and organizations searching for funding. Uh, that's the quick overview of our social media channels. Twitter is still our most active social media channel with followers tripling over the five-year period. In 2018, we launched the GFMD LinkedIn account as we gradually ramped down our activity on Facebook. So our LinkedIn page is going strong with over 1,500 followers and average of 2,200 posts engagements per month. I will also quickly cover newsletters and mailing lists. So since 2019, we have been using mailing lists to interact with our members and help them share information and resources. Some mailing lists are exclusively for members, while others uh, include the, including the EU media advocacy mailing list, DC sustainability and GFMD impact lists are open to the wider community. As well as the mailing list, we produce two newsletters, the bottom line newsletter as Anne-Marie has already mentioned, introduces subscribers to the media development fundraising guide. 
and another newsletter, MediaDev Insider, gives an overview of the latest trends in media development and journalism support. Thank you.